war for oil profits, hands off Russia. No war for oil profits, hands off Russia. No war for oil profits, hands off Russia. Money for health care, not for war. Money for health care, not for war. Money for health care, not for war. Money for housing, not for war. Money for housing, not for war. Money for housing, not for war. Hands off Russia. Hands off Donbass. Bring the troops home. Brothers and sisters, siblings, we're out here today to say, first of all, we salute the Amazon.com workers in Staten Island who yesterday voted to unionize. The first union victory at Amazon in the United States. We salute the communities that continue to resist racist police terror, despite the pro-cop propaganda from Mayor Adams and President Biden. And we salute the people of Donbass, who are resisting a war against them by the United States and Ukraine that most people in this country don't even know about. We're being told every day that we have to identify with Ukraine because it's under attack from Russia. They tell us that Russia's intervention was unprovoked and that Ukraine is a model democracy. What they don't tell us is how Ukraine has been waging a brutal war on its neighbors in Donbass for the last eight years at the cost of more than 14,000 lives. They don't tell us how neo-Nazi and white supremacist gangs in Ukraine are weaponized by Washington and NATO to carry out this war. They don't tell us how the Donbass republics requested Russia's help to intervene and try to end this war, not start one. And they don't tell us about the working class Ukrainians and national minorities in Ukraine who've been repressed and suffered from austerity since the U.S.-backed coup in 2014. They don't tell us how the U.S. government, under both Republicans and Democrats, has spent the last 30 years expanding NATO to the borders of Russia because it wants to take it over and exploit its natural resources and cheap labor. Ukraine is not the small, innocent country oppressed by a larger neighbor. The Donbass republics, Donetsk and Lugansk, are those countries, and their oppressor is Ukraine, armed to the teeth with U.S. and NATO weapons. Donbass is like Palestine, facing a U.S. proxy war by the state of Israel. Donbass is like Yemen, facing a U.S. proxy war by Saudi Arabia. Donbass is like Cuba, blockaded by the U.S. in an effort to starve its people into surrender. Donbass is poor and working class communities in this country facing racist police violence. Many of us today remember how the U.S. government lied 20 years ago about Iraq's so-called weapons of mass destruction. They didn't exist. But the lie fooled enough people for long enough for the U.S. to invade. Millions of Iraqi people and thousands of U.S. troops were killed or injured as a result. A proud country was destroyed. The U.S. government always lies to start its wars for profit. This weekend, we remember Dr. Martin Luther King, who was assassinated on April 4, 1968. Dr. King was hated by the U.S. government and white supremacists because he fought for the rights of black and brown people, but also because he opposed the lies that were used to justify the U.S. war in Vietnam. We're here today in the spirit of Dr. King to expose the lies the Biden administration and Congress and the corporate media are using to provoke war with Russia. The stakes are even higher today than they were in Iraq. Russia is a nuclear power, and Washington has pushed the country into a corner. The war the U.S. and NATO are promoting now to drive up profits for Wall Street and big oil could easily escalate into a new world war. Workers
workers here are suffering from the collapse of public health, evictions and inflation, and environmental disaster. We need to demand that Biden and Congress stop funding war and deal with the crisis here. Yes. Hands off Russia! Hands off Donbass! Bring the troops home now! My name is Andre Powell, and I'll be chairing this today's street meeting. I'm with the Socialist Unity Party. This weekend marks the anniversary of the death of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Just one year before his death, Dr. King spoke out so strongly against the Vietnam War. We have chosen this weekend to honor Dr. King's memory and his stance against war around the world, to raise our voices in support of the people of the Donbass region, the Donetsk People's Republic, the Luk People's Republic, who have declared themselves an independent state. But you see, the U.S. government doesn't like that. The U.S. government thinks that it's the only government that has the right to tell a country, oh, you're an independent state now. So we stand up for the national sovereignty and self-determination of the people of the Donbass region. And it's important to point out why they declared themselves an independent state from the rest of the Ukraine. In 2009, there was a bona fide election in the Ukraine that elected a president, 2009. But then, in 2014, what occurred in the Ukraine was a coup, a coup by neo-Nazis and fascists that overruled throughout the duly elected government of the Ukraine that was elected in 2009, and they replaced it with this neo-fascist political system. The people in the Donbass region, the Donetsk and Lugansk, said, no, we refuse to be governed by a group of neo-fascists. We won't stand for it. We no longer see ourselves as part of the Ukraine, and they have every right to do that. If you notice what goes on around the world, the U.S. supports every group that wants to break away from the country it used to belong to, as long as that group will bidding, do the bidding of the U.S. corporations, and of the U.S. banks and the banks in, in Western Europe. They don't have a right to decide for the people in the Donbass region whether or not they should be independent and free from the Ukraine. But since the Donbass region made that declaration, as Greg mentioned, they have been continuously bombed by the Ukraine. And you heard not one damn word in the U.S. media from the New York Times building, from CNN, from ABC, NBC. None of them mentioned the eight years of killing in the Donbass region by the neo-Nazi Ukrainian government. Now suddenly they want to cry crocodile tears because Russia at the request, and that bears repeating, the Donbass people requested help from Russia after eight years of bombing and shelling by the neo-Nazi Ukraine, Ukraine government. So Russia intervened. The big business media in this country are mistakenly calling an invasion. It is not an invasion. Russia intervened to protect the people of the Donbass region who were being slaughtered by the Ukrainian government.
14,000 people died and not one word in the big business media in this country or in Europe. But now, all day long, you, they want to talk about the Ukraine and this, that the Russians are going to the Ukraine. We cannot forget that there's another aspect to this. The aspect of oil. U.S. and European oil companies, they want to interrupt and cut off the supply of Russian oil that was going into, into Europe. That's why they want to apply sanctions to try to hurt the country of Russia, to interrupt their ability to sell their oil abroad. You see, it's not just the humanitarian issue. issue. It's about world finances. It's about control of the oil wealth and who reaps the profits from the oil wealth. That is what is behind this. That is why the U.S. supported a fascist coup in the Ukraine in 2014. So we demand and we say, stop the U.S. war machine from Donbass to the Philippines. Stop the U.S. war machine from Donbass to the Philippines. Stop the U.S. war machine from Donbass to the Philippines. Hands off Russia. Hands off Donbass. Hands off Russia. Hands off Donbass. Hey, hey, ho, ho. The Pentagon has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. NATO has got to go. NATO has got to go. We know what NATO really is, sisters, brothers, and siblings. NATO is a tool of U.S. and Western European imperialism. NATO was put there after the end of World War II. It's called the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Back in the 1945 when World War II ended. After Russia helped defeat the Nazis, Russia lost 20 million people and during World War II as they helped to, with the Western powers to defeat the Nazis. But then the U.S. and Western European imperialist powers set up this new grouping called NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, made up, of course, of the U.S. on one side of the Atlantic and the Western countries of Europe. And their job was to encircle the Soviet Union well, now the Soviet Union's been gone for 30 years. So there really is no need for NATO anymore. But NATO has become another arm of U.S. imperialism and British imperialism and German imperialism. And that is why they are banding together to attack Russia, to sanction Russia, to try and hurt the Russian economy. We say, hands off Russia. No war for oil profits. Hands off Russia. No war for oil profits. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Bill Daughters. We are here today to say no to the lies. The lies of the corporate media who are owned by corporations that get rich off war. We are here today because we want to get the Pentagon off our backs. We don't need tens of billions of dollars going to war when people here are hungry, when people here are homeless, when people here are denied the right to free health care, when the schools don't have adequate funding, the media and the corporate flunkies on Capitol Hill and in the White House want you to believe that one day Russia just up and attacked Ukraine. They don't tell you this war has been going on for eight years. That for eight years since a U.S.-backed, CIA-backed coup took power in Ukraine the Kiev regime, I won't say Ukraine, I'll say the U.S.-backed regime in Kiev has been waging war against its own people. 
who don't want to live under the government that was imposed in 2014, who don't want to live under NATO, don't want to be part of NATO, who want to live in peace with their neighbors. For the past 30 years, we have watched the United States military destroy country after country, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, <coughs> for no other re Yugoslavia, for no other reason but to enrich giant corporations, particularly the oil monopolies who want to take back control of the world's energy reserves. And now we're supposed to believe that the United States is pouring arms and money and advisors and troops into Ukraine to support democracy. If the Kiev regime were democratic, if the Kiev regime were not riddled with Nazis, the U.S. The US government would not support it. This war, every drop of blood being shed in Ukraine, is on the hands of the White House, of Congress, of the Pentagon, who have been driving NATO, expanding the NATO alliance, <coughs> onto the soil of the former Soviet Union, have been imposing IMF austerity programs, have been pitting nationalities against one another, and have been encouraging and aiding Nazi organizations inside Ukraine who have been terrorizing the Roma people, who have been terrorizing Carpatho-Russians, and have been waging a full-scale war against the people of eastern Ukraine. This war would have been very easy to avoid. Stop pressuring Ukraine to join NATO, recognize the Minsk agreements, and let the people of eastern Ukraine, of Donbass, of Donetsk and Lugansk, determine their own destiny. But the war profiteers who own the U.S. government did not want a peaceful resolution. They wanted to provoke a war. And they leaned on the government of, Ukraine, of the Kiev regime. They leaned on, on Zelensky, who is nothing more than a dancing flunky of corporate oligarchs like Ihor Kolomoski, yeah. <coughs> who also funds the Nazi Azov Battalion and the Nazi uh, Azov Regiment, not Battalion, and the Idar Battalion, Idar Brigade. So the answer for us, the answer, the way to stop this war is very simple. The U.S. and NATO should get the hell out. No more arms into Ukraine, no more U.S. troops, ships, planes in Europe or West Asia or anywhere else. Allow the people of eastern Ukraine, of Donetsk and Lugansk and Mariupol too, to determine their own destiny. And we need money and for jobs and housing and schools and hospitals, not for war. They just appropriated $31 billion more for the war budget using this using the events in Ukraine as a pretext but the United States military planners were planning this war a long time ago we say hands off Russia no more wars for oil profits shut down NATO shut down the Pentagon bring all the troops home and that's the way to peace and we want power to the people and justice here and we need to fight you know, it's not Russia that's, that's evicting people all over this country, threatening people with evictions. It's not Russia that's raising gas prices. Yeah. They say it is, but it's the sanctions that are doing that. The oil monopolies get rich when they impose sanctions, when the U.S. government imposes sanctions on the oil-producing countries of the world, Russia, Iraq, Iran, Venezuela. It's all one war being waged by the Pentagon and the U.S. military and its proxies against the people of the world. This war is a proxy war by the U.S. against Russia and the United States. The politicians and corporate flunkies in Washington are willing to fight Russia to the blood of every last Ukrainian. The Ukrainian people are being used. They are being victimized, too. And there are horrible war crimes going on. 
there, and many of them are being committed by the Ukrainian regime itself, who are firing on refugees, not allowing them to leave Mariupol. If you read, the, if you look at the real footage from Mariupol, the, the, you'll see that much of the destruction. Interviews with people there, you'll see that much of the destruction is done by the army of the Kiev regime. That's true. If you listen to something other than CNN or MSNBC, which is owned by a war corporation, but people are so dumb in this country that they believe anything that the corporations tell them. If they, they say it's not state-controlled media, but in fact the corporations run the state and and the, and the tell the and tell the state what to do, and they and and they they are the voice of the warmongers. They lied about Iraq. They lied about Syria, they lied about Korea, they lied about Vietnam, and they're lying about Ukraine, they're lying about Russia. Bring the troops home. No to NATO, no to war. No to NATO, no to war. No to NATO, no to war. Our next speaker is Lalan Schoenstein from Women in Struggle. I woke up this morning thinking about coming here today. I asked myself, why are we engaged in another war? Look at the recent withdrawal of the U.S. military from Afghanistan. Are the Afghani people any better? Are they any better off after years of war that plunder their economy. If the U.S. occupation had improved the lives of the Afghani people, would the U.S. forces have been driven out? Did the U.S. war in Afghanistan benefit us here? Only a very small percent benefited. The rich are richer every day and we are poorer than before. The U.S. has one of the highest death rates in the whole world from COVID. This is no natural disaster. It's, it is because the U.S. with all its wealth does not provide for a national health care system. Now, Congress has withdrawn funds from fighting COVID in order to fund another $13.6 billion for a war for the war machine in Ukraine. Inflation fueled by the U.S. war machine, is cutting down our income. Prices for gas, for food, for rent are skyrocketing. It is another U.S. war. The horrors of the evening news were conceived in the Pentagon. Leon Panetta, the former head of the Pentagon and the CIA has declared this a proxy war against Russia. NATO is not a peacekeeping alliance. It is a war machine commanded by the Pentagon, spawned by the U.S. to threaten the to threaten the Soviet Union during the Cold War. During the last 20 years, NATO has expanded into most countries along the Russian border, fueling them with ever more lethal weapons. The Russians have seen the U.S. and NATO invade Afghanistan, invade Iraq, they saw it demolish Libya and attempt the same operation in Syria. In Iraq alone, the war in Abago has killed about two million people, including half a million children.
Will the U.S. and NATO military funds bring peace to our Ukraine? Will it bring peace to the Ukraine and improve our lives as well? No. It is dragging the Ukrainians into catastrophe. And it is threatening the well-being of the entire world. Fight racism. Fight racism, not war. Do not fight U.S. wars. Fight racism in the United States. Thank you, Lillian. I just want to mention a special case that we really need to pay attention to. There are two teenagers that live in the Donbass region, in the Donetsk area, who oppose the fascist Ukrainian government. They are twins, teenage brothers, Alex and Mikhail Kano, Kano. Okay, Alex and Mikhail Kanonovich. I knew I had I had it there in the tip of my tongue. They have been taken by the Ukrainian fascist government authorities. We have not heard from them since they were arrested and detained. We deeply fear that they are being tortured and their lives are at risk. They are members of the Youth Communist League of the Donetsk People's Republic. We demand right now and ask you to raise your voices and demand that these two youth be released and all the political prisoners of this neo-Nazi Ukraine government be released. Our next speaker is a member of Youth Against War and Racism, Andrew Mayton. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm out here representing Youth Against War and Racism. We're joining with the other organizations and organizers here today to say no war on Russia and Donbass. No war by the U.S., no war by U.S. imperialism, period. We also want to highlight the struggles of all the other anti-imperialist struggles all over the world. There's a battle against U.S. imperialism being fought in Yemen, in Syria, in the Philippines, in India. People, workers, youth all over the world fighting against imperialism. I wanted to raise another, another campaign, another war campaign that is not being reported in the news, and it is the bombings in the south of the Philippines. These are the same bombs that are bought by the Pentagon and sent to the Philippines using your tax dollars. Yeah. Every single gun, every single bomb that is dropped on activists and indigenous people in the Philippines, it's the same ones being sent to Ukraine. We learned of an activist in the Philippines. His name is Chad Baouk. He graduated summa cum laude from the University of Philippines. He could have gone on to live a very comfortable life, make, make money, have, uh, have a normal, middle-class, petty bourgeois life, but he chose to serve the people. He chose to serve the Lumad indigenous people in the Philippines. He, he served as a teacher to them. Chad Baouk was brutally murdered by the state forces in the Philippines, the Philippine National Police and the armed forces of the Philippines. Those forces murdered Chad Baouk using guns that they, that they use U.S. funds to buy. They send, the, U the United States and the Pentagon send your tax dollars every single day, millions and millions of dollars, to fund state forces that will suppress 
and murder anybody that dares to stand against imperialism. We're, we're youth, we're workers, we're students. Those tax dollars could go to debt forgiveness. Biden promised, <laughs> Biden promised to, to cancel debt, to relieve people of student debt. He canceled the debt for like what, three or four people? He could keep doing that. But no, Biden released the biggest Pentagon budget we've ever seen. We stand against imperialism. We, we're going to need jobs in the future. The youth have barely any future to, to look ahead to. Not while funds are going to the Pentagon. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Johnny Stevens. I'm Johnny Stevens with Paths to Improve School Transportation. We have 60,000 children every day that ride the school bus, 70,000 ride general school bus, and on those general school bus you have 40 kids and one driver. If we were to put two drivers on that bus, that would be 5,000 more jobs that we have, and the children would get attention on the bus and their needs, and the driver would be able to deliver their work. This is the crime that's happening to our kids every day, going to school, trying to get an education, trying to fight for their civil rights and their human rights. And they're being abused by the DOE and by the pe people who of transportation. This money is being spent in Wall Street and being sent to spend the war in Ukraine. When this money should be spent here for children's needs. We're talking about children who are nonverbal, children who have autism, and they are not getting the service that they need from the city administration and from the government administration. This is a war against our children. This is a war that King spoke about when he spoke about the war against Vietnam. But he also spoke about the war against racism, civil rights, and human rights. The war for equal equality. And our children is being denied that. So when Lucha says money for jobs and schools and not war, that's a great slogan. And I'm here to tell you that the crisis that's going on now with our children that's riding little old school buses is a real emergency and it's a real violation against human rights. In April, it will be Autism Month. A lot of activity happening throughout the city. And we will ask everybody to stop and join that particular struggle because autism could be treated. If people get the needs, if people get their personal care, their physical care, and the care for, to help the parents and grandparents and the workers, autism could be treated. Matter of fact, there's only seven autism universities in the whole country, and none in New York, because money is being spent elsewhere. Right here in New York City and Wall Street, there's no university for children with special needs. And when we say children with special needs, we're talking about our children. We're talking about our children who drive school buses, our children who will be teachers, our children who will be engineers, our children who pay taxes. So we're talking about everybody. We're not begging for nothing. We're asking you to be responsible to the community. To the community, all children are special. Everybody is special.
So we ask them for scientific help with parents to improve school transportation. One thing that we want everybody to be aware of, I've been working this struggle for 10 years because I have a child who, or, who has autism, a child who is so special, who's so scientific, who's so developed, I could barely keep up with him. He's brilliant because he had the opportunity to have a community around him. We are pissed. That's what Parents to Improve Sanitation stands for. We're pissed at this racism and this violation of civil rights of our children, our family, our grandchildren, because when this kid is affected, when this child is sitting on a bus for six hours, when this child has to get up six o'clock in the morning and get home at eight o'clock, and when you call DOE and ask them what's happening with your child, they tell you to call another organization called People Transportation, and they don't answer the phone. This is terrorism. This is terrorism and a violation of that child needs. We are campaigning in the general election for school bus bill of rights. We're going to ask you, all the voters, all the people sitting in hell Square, we're going to ask you to go to the polls and vote for a school bus bill of rights for our children to have their civil right and human right to education. And we're going to reorganize the terror and the rape and the robbery that's going on by the Board of Ed and by these private companies who bid on school bus routes and don't pick our kids up on time and bring them home late. We will have a legal right to pursue if a child is sitting on a bus two hours waiting on somebody else to get out of school and they get home four hours late. It's a lot of children in shelters due to a lot of needs and they have to catch the bus. They are in a shelter and they have to catch the bus to school and that service is being cut. That's the service that's needed. So we should spend the money here not for a new war. We got to remember all the wars that they had recently in Iraq. When they showed you a hundred baby carriage in Ukraine, you got to remember what they said in Iraq about all the babies being thrown out of the incubators. You got to remember that they bombed Yugoslavia for 72 days. You got to remember the mass murder that took place in Libya and displace the government that was giving their people basic needs from their own reserve in their own country. So we want to speak out for the children in all these countries, for their needs, for their education, and for their civil rights. So in November, join us. We're not asking for any special treatment or regards or trust out of the electoral official and our school bus bill of rights. Our school bus bill of rights will be paired. It will be inclusion of youth, of people who has autism, of grandparents, of school bus workers, union workers. It will be a community labor coalition that will be in the street like right now with you, talking about issues of wars, talking about issues of jobs, and our children need. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johnny. Next, I'd like to introduce Julius Crow. Hello, everyone. Hello. My name is Frederick Julius Crow. <laughs> I'm from the University of Pennsylvania. And uh, I wanted to come here and talk about the uh, war against the war, this fake war, this fake war against Russia. Because what happens when we put tariffs on Russia? We face the taxes. The rich, they can keep, they can keep paying high gas prices. Us, 
regular living citizens, we can't handle this. Number two, food prices. We have an issue with the food prices. Look at me, I'm big. I like to eat food, I can't, I can't spend money on food anymore. Too expensive. And third, my last point, I'll go quick, NATO. NATO is a sham. NATO is a sham. Why, why, why won't the Ukraine be allowed into NATO, huh? I'm just asking questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julie, from University of Penn. Our next speaker is Heather Cotton, a teacher and a longtime activist. Thank you, La Lucia, for letting me speak. I'm going to speak today about Nazis. I know you hear the word neo-Nazis, but a neo-Nazi is just a baby Nazi, like the person who's the child of a Nazi and born sometime in, oh, I don't know, 1949. And now he has a son or daughter, and they're a Nazi too, only they don't want to necessarily be identified as much. And as a matter of fact, this is just private, but I just got kicked off Facebook because I mentioned the fact that the United States trains these Nazi people. What right do I have to even talk about this? Well, I'll tell you. Because those very Nazis that were in Ukraine and led by this fellow whose name was Stefan Bandera killed my family in Belarus. As a matter of fact, my first husband's family was killed by the same group of Nazis in Ukraine back in the 1940s, early 40s. So what I'm saying here, what do you want from me? Please go away. You can't ask a question. Buzz off. Sorry. The fact is, that we don't know the history of Nazism. You're not taught it in school. Do you know where the Nazis got their money originally from? They got their money originally from, from people like Morgan and the Kennedy family and Rockefeller and, and Henry Ford. That's the history of Nazis' connection to this country. And then after the war, the United States brought in Nazis to be head of the NATO in the CIA. The whole United States secret governments that are going on has a Nazi connection. So the fact is that if you talk about neo-Nazis like they're some kind of cute little Nazis, let me just tell you that they're the ones who killed 14,000 people in the Donbass and Lugansk. And they're the people the United States is supporting. And by the way, and I'm Jewish, Israel is supporting them as well. Yes, the, Z the Zionists, who oh, there's a history you don't know about that, because the earliest Zionists worked with the South African uh, imperialists in England, and they're the ones who essentially uh, ended up hating the Palestinians. When we talk about Palestinians, what's happened to them is because that's what the Zionists do. The same thing that Nazis are doing right now in Ukraine and did, the same thing that Nazis did in Yugoslavia, and I just want to tell you something. This is a star from Yugoslavia, and in Yugoslavia, NATO started its new move eastward, and they started with Yugoslavia, and they destroyed that country and broke it into six different parts, and there were Nazis in various parts of it, especially in Croatia. So listen, if you don't know the history of really what happened with the Nazis, don't look at your high school history textbooks. Yes, I was a high school history teacher for 37 years, and it's not there. You don't have the history of of Nazis in this country because if you did, you'd know just how connected the United States government was and is to Nazis in this world. And there are Nazis at the head of many of those Eastern European countries that used to be part of the USSR. So that's what I wanted to say today because I'm a teacher and I want to teach about Nazis. Thank you very much. My name is Lee Patterson, and I am a member of the People's Power Assembly, and today I'm here to say no to NATO. No to new wars anywhere in this world. We have got to tell the United States we're not going to have any more wars for so-called democracy, because they're not fighting for democracy. They fight for all superpower and white supremacy. Malcolm X told you long time ago that the U.S. media is the most dangerous enemy 
of people worldwide. They tell lie over lie over lie. They get you to accept anything off the news media and to tell you anything that they will find to get you to believe. They tell lies about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, throwing the babies out the incubators. They tell lies about Gaddafi killing his own people. They tell lies about Syria and Assad killing his own people. We have got to reject those kind of lies because they only lead to more wars and more profits for big business. We have got to remember what Dr. King said, that the wars of this country take out of the pockets of children at home. If you want to care about children, stop the police brutality against black children. Black Lives Matter. Stop the lies against the black children in this country. Stop the lies against brown children in this country. We have got to stand up and demand an end to U.S. imperialism. U.S. imperialism all over the globe and U.S. imperialism here at home. Every time a cop kills a black kid, it's U.S. imperialism. Every time they kill an Indian kid, it's U.S. imperialism. War against the standing white people in, in, in the Midwest, that's U.S. imperialism against people. We have got to stand up against U.S. war all over this country because U.S. war doesn't bring any liberation to U.S. people in this country. We can't depend on Rocky, Rambo, and G.I. Joe to take up for the people of this country. They're not going to fight for your liberation. I'm going to say it again. Rocky, Rambo, and G.I. Joe is not going to stand up for your liberation. we got to fight for our own liberation because these politicians ain't doing it. All they care about is rich folks. All they care about is wealthy folks. Look at the rents in this town. The rents are ridiculous. $50,000 for a hole in the wall. It's ridiculous. Look at the look at, look at at the little minimum pay that people are getting. It's ridiculous. You spend all this time to get to go to work, and they don't pay you nothing. Your money is gone the same day you get paid. It's time to stand up and fight back against these tyrants, these millionaires who run society. We can't continue to accept the blue-eyed lies across the media because they tell you number lies. CNN, MSNBC, they're telling you lies just as bad as Fox. We got to stand up and demand the end to this bullshit line against the, the peoples who, 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 are, who are standing up to fight for our children and our freedom. Thank you. That's what I have to say. All right, our next speaker is Alex Summerfield. Uh, hi, my name is Alex uh, with Struggle of Lucha. The People's Power Assembly, I'm from Baltimore. Um, just a brief few words. In, 1903, in 1903, a young Jewish girl emigrated to this country from Ukraine. Her name was Anna Goldstein. She was my great-grandmother. She fled Ukraine from anti-Semitic, violent, racist pogroms. The same sort of pogroms that neo-Nazis have been carrying out in Donbass and eastern Ukraine for eight years. Since the right-wing coup in 2014. A right-wing, racist, anti-Semitic coup. The same violence, the same violence that my great-grandmother fled from is deeply seated in the Ukraine today, particularly in Donbass. For eight years, neo-Nazi troops like the Azov and Idar Brigades have inflicted terror and horror upon the people of that region. All people, particularly targeted Russian-speaking people and Roma people. And in terms of my community, the amount of anti-Semitic incidents in Ukraine spiked after the 2014 right-wing coup. The apartments of rabbis were burned. Synagogues were defaced. Jewish cemeteries were vandalized. And that sort of violence has continued 
again, particularly in the Donbass. These are not freedom fighters. These are not patriots. They are Nazis. And they're Nazis supported by the puppet regime of Vladimir Zelensky, who is not an ally of my people. He's a fraud. He's a NATO-backed fraud, and he has got his people into a war. Absolutely. If, they, if Ukraine didn't want this, they should not have supported neo-Nazis in Donbass and taken NATO money and weapons. Neo-Nazis in Donbass are the real enemy. Not Russia. Not China. Not any other country. It's fascism that is backed by NATO. And all the press people, all workers, all of us have to stand up and tell the truth. We are tired of the lies. We're tired of comparisons of Putin to Hitler. I don't want to hear it. The only Hitlerites are in the Ukrainian National Guard, the military, and the police. They are ruthless, and they have to be defeated. And I say that as a, as a proud Jew and a socialist. We have to defeat these Nazis, so we stand with the people of Donetsk and Lugansk, and we pray for victory for Donbass. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Our next speaker is David Card. There's so much that the media is not telling you about this war in Ukraine. One of the things is the absolute brutality of the Nazi National Guard in Ukraine and these nationalist battalions. In particular, one of the most horrific things is their absolute disregard for the rules of war. They're uh, using of civilians as human shields, putting military equipment near civilians, and then having the gall to say that the opposing side is killing civilians when they are using them as cover. They want them to die in order to plaster the media here with the dead children in Ukraine because they put the target on them. They also are torturing prisoners of war they take these people and just because there's a war does not mean you can execute prisoners. It doesn't mean that you can torture them. There have been uh, videos, documents of Russian prisoners who have been had their knees shot out by Ukrainian Nazis. People whose eyes have been gouged out for being prisoners. Abuses, beatings of prisoners and this is illegal it's against the geneva conventions against the rules of war there's a horrific video of a man who was stabbed to death in his eyes and his neck by a ukrainian nazi uh, for being suspected of being russian or having russian sympathies no matter what uh anyone's position is on this this are these are brutal crimes of a fascist government and these are these are being supported by the the government of Ukraine. And this has to end. Thank you. Thank you, David. Our next speaker is Sharon Black. Thank you, Andre. I'm with the Unemployed Workers Union. And I wanted to say a couple things this afternoon. You know, the first thing is that the speaker who spoke before the last speaker really broke my heart. I'm not Jewish. He is Jewish. And it seems a crime that in 2022 we are still fighting the Nazis. Only this time it's even worse than the fact that U.S. and NATO is backing fascism in the Ukraine. And they're hiding it from the people here. And I think that Alex said it better than anybody else can. And it just kept making me think, 2022, and there's really still a fascist threat out there. Not only out there, right here in the U.S. But I wanted to say a couple things in terms of the Unemployed Workers Union. First, we want to really announce, and many people have seen the great news, that the Amazon workers voted and won their first union election in terms of unionizing Amazon against the trillion dollar, billion dollar, whatever you want to call Bezos monster. And I call him a monster, a billionaire monster. 
Because that's the folks, it's the billionaires, and it's the billion dollar war industry that is benefiting from the war. And I don't know about any of you all that are shopping today, but when you go in your food market, can you afford food right now? And you know, really? Can you afford this war? A war that's really being waged on behalf of the oil and bankers, the oil and billion dollar, trillion dollar oil industry? I don't think so. So I got up here to speak, not because I have a lot more to say than others. Today is really a part of a teach-in, a part of a movement across this country to stop the war lies, to stop the war lies, because that's what's going on, to try to fool us to support our own oppression. So when we go in the supermarket or when we go to put gas in our gas tanks and we can't afford it, we want to blame it on Russia. Or we want to blame it on this person and that person. Instead of the billion dollar oil, what do you call it, oligarchs, I think is what we want to call them, the oil oligarchs that are, reside right here in this country, the bankers. It's really those who are responsible. It's their greed. No one's forcing them. No one has a gun to their head to raise prices. It's really a question of capitalist greed. That's all it is. They don't have to do it. They could say just like us, it's been a hard time, okay? There's some disruption in the supply line, but they created that disruption. And they created that disruption so that they can make more in profit. But we're supposed to pay for the war. And it, as bad as it is here, it is the people of the eastern part of Ukraine, Donbass region, that are paying with their lives. And of course, people in general that are paying for their lives abroad. So I just wanted to make this announcement. If you've come out to this street meeting, to this rally, we are planning rallies all across the country in towns and large cities to get the truth out about the war. And as other speakers have said, this is the weekend of the anniversary of Dr. King's assassination. And it was Dr. King, though it wasn't popular at the time, because I was around during that time, to oppose the war. What Dr. King said at that time really was that the bombs that are falling on Vietnam are exploding in our cities. And it's true, because the trillions of dollars that they're utilizing, and if you looked at the recent budget, you could see it, is money that we need right here at home, whether it's for schools, whether it's for education or jobs or any of the things that we need, medical care, and certainly to roll back food and gas prices, because people should see that sign, roll back food and gas prices. We need to do that. And what Biden needs to do is make an emergency decree, and he has the power to do it, to roll back gas and food and other prices right now. It's not without precedent, it's been done before, and we can do it again. So again, as you're, if you're walking by, don't be shy. I always notice that people in New York City are so shy at one level. They'll shout something at you and they'll run, but come up here and sign up on the sign-up sheet. Try to get the facts about the war. Go to www.struggle-la-lucha.org so that you can, you know, read and learn more about what's going on. But one, most importantly, sign up on the clipboard, or if you don't have time to get out your phone and take down all this information, there are people that have flyers here. Take the flyer, because the only way, I don't care what you're into, whether it's you're worried about rolling back the food prices, or whether you're worried about gas prices at the pump and how it's going to impact us, or whether you want an end to wars, because we all want an end to war, but the only way we're going to end war is when we end U.S. imperialism and when we end the actual system of exploitation that makes wars inevitable. So if you want to get in the struggle, please sign this clipboard here. Talk to people. You know, we're only going to be out here about another 15, 20 minutes. We've been out here for about two hours right now talking to people. Take a flyer, learn about what's really going on, and get involved so we can change things. Because I'm going to end with the same thing I began. It took a lot of courage. I'm a former Amazon worker myself. It took a lot of courage for those workers to stand up for their rights 
for their power to decide whether they wanted a union and to organize. But they had to organize. And that's what we have to do in our communities if we're going to win, is organize to end the U.S. imperialism, end the capitalist system for that matter, because it's not benefiting us, and to get involved with the movement to say no to war on Russia and Donbass and not be fooled by the propaganda as easy as it is because, you know, every time they say jump, we're going to jump. I remember during the Iraq war, you know, I was actually in a TV show and actually the lies were beginning on that war. And let me tell you something. The war is not about those who are walking by here. They're not about the people that are sitting here. They're not about me. They're not about this brother. It's not about any of us here. The wars are about making profits for big oil companies and for bankers to defend their interests abroad. And so until we can get that in our bones and decide that we want to stand up against that, we're going to be suffering and suffering and suffering. The evictions are coming. Another wave of COVID may be around the corner. And, you know, we were angry right from the very beginning when they couldn't even get the masks into the CVS and the corner pharmacies, but they certainly could get all the arms shipments quickly to the Ukraine, even before there was any intervention, before there was anything but the rumors of war. So they could do all that, but they can't seem to move a shipment of masks and other needed supplies from one part of the country to the next. So, you know, I don't really care. I don't care who you're for. We need to make a strong demand that Biden stop this war and that we need to bring, really, if we're going to fight anything, let's fight high food prices. Let's fight racism, especially on the anniversary of Dr. King's birthday. So I'm just, I'm just keeping this mic going to really say to you all that are walking by, take a flyer, sign up and get involved, and if you come out to be a part of this street meeting, sign up. Please don't be tired if you're young or if you're older. We're going to be going around to different boroughs, different subway stops, and getting out the information. So thank you for all who stopped and listened. Take a flyer and keep in the struggle till we win. Thank you. And if the Amazon workers can do it, then we can do, do it too. So roll back food prices. Thanks and big oil profit from Pentagon's wars. Let's say no war on Russia or Donbass. Thanks everyone for coming out today. I just wanted to say a little more about why we're out here. No war for oil profits. Hands off Russia. 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 Money for housing, not for war. Money for housing, not for war. Money for housing, not for war. So I saw a headline in the news this morning about how the United States is about to complete its shipment of almost a trillion dollars worth of weapons to Ukraine this week. And when you think about how long it took for the U.S. government to get two measly home COVID tests mailed to people in this country, how they promised high quality masks to be provided free to people and then never delivered on them, and how they have dropped all the COVID restrictions because big business wants people back to work, wants kids back in school, even if it's not safe to do so. And then you think about how they've put this incredible amount of high-tech weaponry to Ukraine in just a few weeks. You realize what the U.S. government's priorities really are. It's not taking care of the people. It's not defending their rights. They're not defending the rights of black and brown people to vote. They're not defending the rights of women to reproductive rights. They're not doing anything to protect the trans children who are under attack in, in Texas and around the country. 
But if they want a war, if they see dollar signs in their weaponry, you can bet they'll find a way to get it there and fast. We're being told every day that we need to identify with the people in Ukraine, or rather with the government and the army in Ukraine, because it's under attack from Russia. They tell us that Russia's intervention is unprovoked and that Ukraine is some kind of model democracy. They don't tell us how Ukraine has been waging a brutal war on its neighbors in Donbass for the last eight years at the cost of more than 14,000 lives. They don't tell us how neo-Nazi and white supremacist gangs in Ukraine are weaponized by Washington and NATO to carry out this war. They don't tell us how the people of Donbass requested the aid of Russia to end this war, not to start one. And they don't tell us about working class Ukrainians and national minorities in Ukraine who've been repressed and suffered from austerity since the U.S. supported coup in 2014. They don't tell us either how the U.S. government under both Republicans and Democrats for the last 30 years has been expanding NATO to the borders of Russia because it wants to take it over and exploit its natural resources and cheap labor. Ukraine is not the small innocent country oppressed by a larger neighbor. The Donbass republics of Donetsk and Lugansk are those countries, and their oppressor is Ukraine, armed to the teeth with U.S. and NATO weapons. Donbass is like Palestine, facing a U.S. proxy war by the state of Israel. Donbass is like Yemen, facing a proxy war by Saudi Arabia. Donbass is like Cuba, blockaded by the U.S. in an effort to starve its people into surrender. Donbass is like poor and working class communities in this country, facing racist police violence and evictions. Many of us remember how the U.S. government lied 20 years ago, 20 years ago about Iraq's so-called weapons of mass destruction that didn't exist. But that lie fooled people long enough for the U.S. to invade Iraq. As a result of that, millions of Iraqi people and thousands of U.S. troops were killed or injured. A proud country was destroyed. The U.S. government always lies to start wars for profit and power. This weekend, we remember Dr. Martin Luther King, who was assassinated on April 4th, 1968. King was hated by the U.S. government and white supremacists because he fought for the rights of black and brown people, but also because he opposed the lies that were used to justify the U.S. war in Vietnam. We're here today in the spirit of Dr. King to tell the truth and expose the lies the Biden administration and Congress are using to provoke war with Russia. The stakes are even higher than they were in Iraq. Russia is a nuclear power, and Washington has pushed the country into a corner. The war the U.S. is promoting now to drive up profits for Wall Street and big oil could easily escalate into a new world war. Meanwhile, workers here are suffering from the collapse of public health measures, from evictions and inflation. We need to demand that Biden and Congress stop funding wars and deal with the crisis here at home. Hands off Russia! Hands off Donbass! Bring the troops home! Hands off Russia! Hands off Donbass! Bring the troops home! Hands off Russia! Hands off Donbass! Bring the troops home! We are here today to say no to the lies being told by the White House, by Congress, by the corporate media to justify stealing even more billions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars to give to the war machine and the military-industrial complex. 
to say no to the lies that are being used to justify high gas prices and high food prices. The media tells us today, or rather Monday, is the anniversary of the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Murdered for fighting racist oppression and murdered for saying no to the war in Vietnam. Who murdered Dr. King? The U.S. state apparatus. The CIA, the FBI, but we're supposed to believe that the U.S. state apparatus wants democracy in Ukraine. Dr. King said no to the war in Vietnam. The U.S. bombed, dropped millions of tons of high explosives and napalm and white phosphorus on Vietnam, killing millions of people and devastating the country. But we're supposed to believe that Washington wants democracy in Ukraine. Over the past 30 years, we've seen war after war in Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Syria, Yemen, U.S. weapons being used to destroy entire countries for oil and gas profits. But we're supposed to believe that all of a sudden the corporate flunkies in the White House and the Capitol Hill, Democrat and Republican, are standing for democracy in Ukraine. Ukraine, the Kiev regime, in, is not a democracy. Opposition political parties are banned. Roma people, people of color in Ukraine, are subject to racist terror. Tell and for me, the past me, few decades, for the past my few decades, me. for eight years now, the CIA organized the overthrow of the Ukrainian government of, pre of the president of Ukraine because he refused to accept an IMF austerity plan. Since then, there has been a eight war going on in Ukraine for eight years, paid for and financed by our tax dollars, by the government of the United States, against the millions of Ukrainians, especially in the eastern part of the country, the coal miners and steel workers in Donbass, the region called Donbass, it's a region in Ukraine, next to Russia, where most people speak Russian, and they did not want to live under the U.S.-backed regime. They did not want to live under the IMF austerity program. They did not want to live as part of NATO. And for that, the U.S.-backed regime in Kiev bombed their cities, bombed Donetsk and Lugansk, constant artillery bombardment. Many of the soldiers, they don't tell you <coughs> or they deny that much of the Ukrainian National Guard, backed by the United States, is under the command of Nazis. The Azov Brigade, the Idar Brigade, C-14, the Right Sector, Svoboda Party. They don't tell you that there are millions of Ukrainian refugees living in Russia who want to return to their homes but are not allowed to do so by the Kiev regime. If it were not for the endless support of arms paid for by our tax dollars, to the Zelensky regime in Kiev, there would be no war in Ukraine. When the U.S. began expanding NATO into the former Soviet Union, it was because they wanted war and there was no reason for NATO exist, to exist except to target Russia. But we the people in the United States have nothing against Russia. We have nothing against Iraq, nothing against Syria, nothing against Cuba or Venezuela. We need money for housing and health care 
and transportation and jobs, not war, not war for corporate profit. Don't believe the lies told by CNN and MSNBC that's owned by war contractor General Electric. Don't believe the lies. There's a very clear and simple path for peace in Ukraine. U.S. out! NATO out! Shut down the Pentagon! Get it off our backs! And we say the Biden administration, instead of sending endless arms and more and more troops to Europe, should roll back gas prices and food prices, roll back rents, ban evictions, we want money for the people, not for war, not for endless war. The United States has been waging war against the world for 75 years since Harry Truman declared the Cold War in 1947, 75 years ago. It's time for that war to end. Bring all the troops home. U.S. out of Ukraine. Hands off the Donbass, no war with Russia. Don't believe the corporate lies. If you do, you're a three-year-old, like the guy over there. And, uh, you know, if they've lied to you about Iraq, they lied about Vietnam, they lied about Korea, they lied about Syria and Libya, as even President Obama admitted, why do you think they're telling the truth about Ukraine? No more wars for corporate profits. No to NATO. Shut down the Pentagon. Get the military off our backs. No to NATO. No to war. No to NATO. No to war. Just a word about NATO. We hear it a lot. It's a military alliance that was formed to wage war against the Soviet Union. And after the collapse of the Soviet Union, they kept it and expanded it to wage war against Russia because the corporate monopolies and banks who control this country cannot live without war. But we the people don't need war. Russia is not our enemy. <laughs> End the war now. U.S. out. No to NATO. No to war. No more wars for oil profits. Money for schools and housing and health care and transportation. Not war. Thank you. I'm going to say this one more time before I go. NATO stands for Nazi Aryan Terrorist Organization. NATO stands for Nazi Aryan Terrorist Organization. NATO does not mean any protection or anything protecting your rights. CNN, MSNBC, and Fox are all telling you brazen lies about this war. This war was begun by Nazis being infiltrated into Ukraine. The first black president of the United States put Nazis in Ukraine. That's the truth. The first black president of the United States put Nazis in Ukraine, knowingly. We have to stand up against these lies that the US media is constantly telling you that the, the Ukrainian people are victims of Russia? No, they're victims of the United States. I'm calling them the untouched snakes of, of, of imperialism because they're killing people. We want our money to be going to jobs, fighting COVID, building housing for poor people, building health care. No more money for U.S. wars. All right. All right, yeah, Audrey. Thank you, Lee. If you look at some of the placards that are here today, you see placards that says roll back food and gas prices. Congress has just given trillions of dollars worth of military equipment to the Ukraine. Why is it they can do that? within a month's time, but they can't seem to find the money and agree on funding to build back better 
The COVID virus shut down this country. When I look around my home in Baltimore, I see many restaurants that were the lifeblood of the downtown community. I see many stores that are closed up. That is what needs to be built back, built up. But yet Congress, and it's both the fault of Republicans and Democrats, cannot seem to pass the Build Back Better bill, which would allow working families to get up on their feet, to create jobs so that people can pay their bills, pay their rent, put food in their stomach, especially important with the increasing rise of food prices. But yet Congress can find a trillion dollars to pay for more military equipment to send to the Ukraine. This war, like all U.S. wars, is a giveaway to the military industrial complex because for each plane that crashes and fails, for each tank that fails, Wall Street cheers, because that means they've got to order another air bomber airplane or tank to replace those that were taken down. So we ask everyone to raise your voices and demand that money be given to build back up this country. Money be given to provide adequate health care. Right now they're talking about trying to reduce Medicare for senior citizens like me. But they have the money, but they'd rather use it on the military industrial complex. They'd rather use it to promote war abroad. We raise our voices to say no sanctions on Russia. Truthfully, it must be known. Everyone must realize sanctions are an act of war. You're not bombing a country with bombs. You're not shooting missiles from the Navy uh, ships. You're not shooting artillery fire. But uh, sanctions are indeed an act of war. Anything that starves another country of food, anything that starves another country of medicine, anything that blocks the ability of another country to get what it needs on the international market to take care of the citizens of its country, that is an act of war. We stand united here. We thank you for the many people that have spoken today and given support. And we've had a few come up that joined us, held up a picket sign to say no war on Russia, no war on the Donbass region. Stop the neo-Nazi terror in the Donbass region. Solidarity with the Donetsk and Lugansk movement for independence. We recognize them as independent states. Ukraine, get out of Donbass. Thank you very much, sisters, brothers, and siblings.